Well, good evening, everybody. We've had a hot day today, not as hot as normal. We're, we're going to get up to, I think, 91 today, but um, we're supposed to be cooling down next week, finally. I mean, we're almost October, and we're just now going to drop below 90s, you know, get, in, get out of the mid-90s. Um, we're a little warm and we're a little dry. We're expecting some rain next week and some cooler temperatures. I think it's going to finally signal fall coming on slowly. And um, I'll be watching the lower temperatures. We're still going to be in the low 60s at night. I think towards um, the end of the month, first of the October, we're looking at probably dipping below 60 and getting into the 50s. At that point, I'll have to start bringing in some plans. Um, I thought I'd answer a couple of questions. Um, I get the best questions. You guys just ask the greatest questions. Reminds me of things that I need to do to my own plants. Keeps me growing. Keeps me keeps me looking stuff up all the time. The questions that, that I was going to answer are related to using that dolomitic lime, the calcium. Um, Paula, one of my favorite viewers, one of my YouTube, my, one of my orchid sisters, um, she gave me some beautiful irises that I need to show one afternoon. They're all clumping up and doing beautiful and growing, and even the little variegated one is making a comeback, Paula. Anyway, she asked me a couple of great questions. One was, um, am I concerned about those growths that I'm getting this time late in the year? And, um, you know, should I be concerned about them? Hang on, I'm looking at my notes here to make sure I don't ask the question wrong or give it credit to the wrong person. I'm not, I'm not. Um, Paula, isn't it late in the year for new growths like that? And can the garden lime cause a root burn? Um, <clears throat> to the first question, or I guess to the second question, real quick, I'll answer that one. I've never had any issues with the garden lime. I'm sprinkling it directly on the roots even. I'm not having any issues. I sprinkle it directly on the roots and not, not having any issues with it at all. I've seen some discoloration come from it, I think, but I haven't seen anything that looked like root burn or had the roots die back or anything. Not at all. Not at all. Um, now, there's different types of lime. I'm using the Espoma Dolomitic Garden Lime. There's different types of lime. Some limes are hot or hydrated, and you don't want to use the slake lime or a hydrated, or a, excuse me, a you know, slake lime or yeah, hydrated lime. Those are hotter limes, and they, they can burn. They're, more, they're used more for breaking down clay soils and stuff like that than they are for providing calcium and magnesium. I'm using this type of lime for calcium and magnesium and also to maintain my pH, keep my media from breaking down. Um, that's not as important to me as it would be to other people in moss or bark. I'm in pea gravel, river rock, lava rock, and so the media, the media pH really doesn't have any effect on anything. It's not affected by the nutrients or anything else either. It stays um, neutral. So that's not my issue. It doesn't help my media not for break down because it doesn't break down, but um, it does um, provide a lot of calcium and a lot of magnesium. Um, <clears throat> to the first question with the new growth, as long as my plants are growing, I'm gonna keep on feeding them. I am concerned about the growth late in the year and about being able to get them to full size um, because they're gonna be leaving this grow, this grow area in a couple of weeks and be going inside where temperatures are gonna be quite a bit lower. Um, we get maybe in, the sunroom where they are is going to get maybe in the mid 70s, upper 70s during the day and um, mid 60s at night. Um, and in the wintertime, a little bit cooler than that, but not much. Um, but they are going to be getting a lot of bright sunlight directly through the windows. So I'm not quite sure how they're going to react. Temperatures are going to be cooler and days are going to be shorter, but they're going to be getting a lot of bright light. So to me, I think it's going to be more of a winter rest for them. But um, I think the new growth, as long as the new growths are showing and as long as they're coming out, I'm going to keep feeding them and keep feeding them. Now, at the rate that they're coming out, and I have noticed they're not growing quite as fast as they used to be. Before, I could feed them, and I'd really see them growing fast and fast and fast. Um, they're growing a little bit slower, I can tell, and I'm, not, I'm sure that has to do with lower light levels and shorter days, that kind of stuff. So I've dropped my feed, and I, I may drop back on how many times I'm feeding, but whenever they get water, they're pretty much getting nutrients. Um, I don't ever hardly give water without nutrients anymore, um, very rarely. It's, 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 I usually wait for the rain to do that for me. So I guess to answer that question, I am concerned about those growths, but I'm just going to keep feeding them and feeding them. Um, as long as they're, they're asking for nutrition, like this one's got one, two, another new growth right here, three, three, three big, huge growths on it. Um, it's going to take a lot of nutrition. <clears throat> so I've got to keep the food up. Now I've got a few that aren't showing a lot of big growths. This big Cattleya Manamoto back here. Just finished that growth and the other growth. It just finished two big growths and doesn't have any new ones coming out. So I'm going to back off on it a little bit and watch it. But if I see signs that it's getting ready to put out some new shoots, I'm going to start feeding it again. Um, it may start to get, it may start to slow down or it may be getting to um, go into blue mode. So it may stop growing those new canes or whatever and then go into blue mode. I don't know. 
I don't know. Again, I'm new to orcas. I wish, you know, had I done this 25 years ago, I could probably sit here and talk uh, better about that. But um, to answer your question, that's what I'm going to do. Somebody asked about this one. This is um, BC Windward Flare. I thought it said BLC. BLC Windward Flare, yeah. But I've seen it listed as BC Windward Flare. But, um, what a pretty one. And that was a bag baby last spring. So it's just a year I had it. But, um, it's turned into a really nice plant. Um, more new growth, see? Big new canes, new shoots. So I gotta feed, I gotta feed. The smaller growths that are coming out, I think they'll be okay. I think they're just gonna go slower and take a little bit longer. But, um, I think by the, when I get inside, I don't think they'll, they'll keep putting out new shoots. I think they'll slow down on me and hopefully start going to bloom. Um, a lot of my plants are very young, haven't matured yet, so I don't think some of them are gonna bloom for me, but I, I see a lot of signs of bloom in some of the others. Um, a lot of sheaths and stuff popping out already that I can, I can see blooms down into, so I'm hoping I'm gonna get a few blooms. Um, you know, one of the things you have to keep in mind, especially with Cattleyas, and um, these are SLCs, BLCs, some are Cattleyas, some are RLCs, just a mixture of hybrids, but um, Cattleyas are one of those that are photosensitive. You know, they're very sensitive to light. Um, I remember reading in one of my orchid books a while back, and this answers a couple of questions people have asked me about getting them to bloom. Um, they were talking about back in like the 50s and 60s, when um, 40s, 50s, and 60s, when the corsage flower was so popular. Um, ladies, would, ladies would wear the corsage flowers at Mother's Day and Valentine's Day and during the holidays and Easter and all these different times they would people went out on dates or proms they wore corsage and the corsages usually typically came from the cattleya flower um, because they were heavy thick waxy beautiful loud you know very vibrant and lasted for days and days and days um, back then it was very very popular and thousands tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of these things were bloomed every year for their blooms um, in one of the books they were talking about um, a greenhouse that was growing Number 12 white, as they called the name, I think it was number 12 white, Cattleya. And these plants were all in 10 inch clay pots. You can imagine how big these plants were. And they were on tables that were six feet wide, 300 feet long. And they had single light bulbs hanging above them on these little strands every 50 feet. And what they would do was when they wanted, they kept the lights on at night. So these plants were in the greenhouse during the day and at nighttime, when the sun went down, they had the lights on over the tables above them. And this kept them from blooming. And what they would do is when they wanted the plants to start blooming, they would unscrew a light bulb and that section that was exposed to some darkness would, would trigger it to bloom. And then a couple weeks later, they would unscrew another light bulb and that section would start blooming and they'd unscrew another light bulb and that section. That way they wouldn't get all of them to go into bloom at one time. They would get a succession of blooms. They would get some would bloom for, you know, and the two weeks later, some more bloom and two weeks later, some more would bloom. So they would have, they could control the bloom and control the, the product that they were getting to market. Make sure they had blooms before the holiday, during the holiday, and after the holiday if they even needed them. See what I mean? They were controlling it. But <clears throat> what that tells me is, and it reminds me of how important it is for light with these cattleyas. Um, everybody talks about make sure they get so much light, you know, get them as much light till they're, you know, they're not going to bloom until you have the plants just yellowed, until they're almost yellow. You want to give them so much light, they literally yellow. I disagree with that statement somewhat. I think if your plants are healthy and have enough nutrition, they're not going to be yellow. If they're getting so much light that they're not able to photosynthesize right, I think you're giving them too much light. Um, and I'm not saying they don't turn yellow in the wild, but I'm just just giving my opinions here. I do know if you Google Cattleyas blooming or orchids blooming and you look through there, the ones you see blooming aren't typically yellow. <laughs> you see more green plants, dark green, lush green plants blooming than you see yellow. And that's just my take on it. But back to that Cattleya and the light issue, um, just to just keep this in mind, mine, I want to make sure that mine bloom, um, the ones that are mature enough to bloom and old enough to bloom and um, healthy enough to bloom, I want to make sure they get the opportunity to bloom for me here this, this winter, this fall. So I'm making sure they get plenty of night rest. They get darkness, and I mean darkness. Remember that single light bulb that was left on over the top of them and they, they wouldn't bloom. As soon as they unscrewed that little bit of light, that's that little bit of light, they would trigger them to bloom. Even something as small as, or as insignificant as a porch light can keep your plants from blooming. Now I'm outside. If your plants are in your basement and you have grow lights on them, make sure that you turn them off. Make sure there's no night lights on there. 
make sure it's total darkness for at least eight or nine hours a night. If your plants are in your window sill and there's a street light on outside, you may want to draw your curtains or get a dark blind for them. Turn the lights off in the room. Make sure that there's total darkness for eight or nine hours or you can prevent your plants from blooming. They'll never bloom properly for you or they'll never bloom at all. I've seen people with huge specimen cattleyas and never got them to bloom. And have even said that they've never bloomed for me, never bloomed for me. It could be just something as, as tiny and as insignificant as just they're getting too much light, just a little too much light when they're supposed to be getting darkness. Even that little bitty light leak under a door or through a window can cause them to not bloom properly. <clears throat> my experience with, um, I don't have enough experience with, or, or my experience growing is not with orchids, it's with um, vegetables and bedding plants and other types of plants that are more photosensitive and um, <clears throat> light can definitely you know keep things from flowering properly um just keep that in mind with your cattleyas and your hybrids too as well and i'm not positive which other what other plants there's where research is your friend what other plants are affected by that as well but i would i would bet that some some of the others are also anyway just a thought and my opinions um i think i answered paula's questions i think i had a question from kelly which was Will I continue the lime through the winter? And yes, I will, Kelly. Thank you. Another great question. I will continue the lime through the winter. Um, I'm, I've given it every three weeks right now. And um, let me show you something. Matter of fact, this is the container that I watered my plants in. I have a couple of them like this, but I just emptied this one out. You can see it's still got some moisture down here. But if you look, you can see the that's the dolomitic lime, the calcium that I'm putting on them. It's, some of it's leaching through. I just put it on them recently, so since they've been watered it leaches through it kind of stops after the first couple of times I do that but I still see it in the pots clinging to things so I know it's not all filtering through and gone but it does mix with the water and filter through and it makes sure that everybody who's in this water gets lots of calcium including the mounts including my mounts I've noticed are doing much much better since they've been soaking in this um, but it just shows you that it does filter through and you'll have to reapply it I'm reapplying mine every three weeks and if my watering slows down inside, I may slow down my applications, but I want to make sure they have plenty of calcium around them, especially when we start getting ready for spring again. I want to make sure they have plenty of calcium around them. When they start, if they're growing roots or growing anything, they need to have calcium. Calcium is for every single cell, every cell of that plant, every millimeter of root, leaf, bulb, cane, new shoot, flower spike, petal, blossom, if it's alive and it's on the plant, it has cal It takes calcium to build the structure to make it stand up, to give it its shape. Calcium. If you don't give them enough calcium, you get dwarfed leaves. You get those wrinkled, crooked leaves. If you've got Phalaenopsis at, um, <coughs> excuse me. Now, <coughs> yeah, that's more from cold damage, but if you've got Phalaenopsis with twisted leaves or other orchids that have twisted leaves, cattleyas, you see it in a lot of. Um, some of my older, older, some of the plants I have that have older leaves on them have some of those that are twisted real bad, and that's from lack of calcium. And the cell structure has been damaged from it, and a lot of it won't correct itself. Some of it will, some of it won't. But you'll get those twisted leaves. They'll be they'll be warped and twisted in the center on the edges. Um, that's calcium. The cell structure is not correct, um, and they won't be able to hydrate properly because of that either. So it, it hampers lots of things. Calcium, they can pick and choose. They can absorb what they need and they'll leave the rest of it behind. So make sure they always have plenty of calcium nearby. The sun's going down. Mosquitoes are eating me alive. And I'll, so I'll start talking about nutrients like crazy. I just wanted to answer a few questions and chat about a few things. Um, Jan's doing great. She's resting. Um, thank you again for all those wonderful comments and all the great suggestions for the plants I bought, bought at the show and just for all the wonderful comments thoughts the prayers the messages thank you again for everything um i just noticed that little he's there again that little frog right there they're all over this place but um i'm gonna enjoy my evening i hope you guys do the same thank you for watching and um have a great day